Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here and today with some more examples. So which example number is this? I believe five or six. Whatever it is. Let's say I name it one. Y of t is sine of t <coughs> sorry into x of t. So again have a look. We start with the additivity. So in the additivity, in the first step you do what? So let me do it a little stepwise. You have your input x1 of t. You, you provide it to your system. So the output is sine of t multiplied x1 of t. Sine is the coefficient. Whatever input you give to the system, it's multiplying it with that coefficient. Fine. So you have your input x2 of t. You provide it to the system. You have what? You have sine of t into x2 of t. Now what do you do? You add these two together. So I would take sine of t common and in the brackets I would have x1 plus x2 of t. Fine. This is for additivity. Now, uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Step number two. Now you add the inputs first. x1 plus x2 of t, you provide it as a whole to the system. So the system is doing what? It's, it's, it's multiplying the current input with sine of t. So the current input is this, it's multiplying it with sine of t. So have a look, these two are the same. So the law of additivity holds. Homogeneity. Homogeneity, what do you do? You have your output. Let's say I'm doing it a little more stepwise system you have the output which is sine of t into x of t now you scale it so this would be k times sine of t into x of t in step number two you do what you have your input you scale it first and now you provide it to the system with the, over here we have k times x of t. So now the system is doing what? It's multiplying sine of t with the current input. So the current input is k times x of t. So you have k times sine of t into x of t. Homogeneity is satisfied, which means this is a linear system. The next example, let's say we have a constant in the coefficient. Exponential of 3 x of t. <clears throat> additivity first let's say you have y1 you do it the same step y so y1 would be exponential of 3 x1 of t for another input you would have exponential of 3 x2 of t you add them together y1 plus y2 exponential of 3 x1 of t plus x2 of t Five. In the second step, what you do is you add the inputs first. Now you provide it to the system. So what is the system doing? It's multiplying exponential of 3 to x. So exponential of 3, so I have a log x1 plus x2. So these two are the same. The law of additivity is satisfied. This is that y dash of t, right? And this is y1 plus y2. Homogeneity. In homogeneity, what do you do? You have your input. Uh, let me take it from here, from the output. So the output is uh, y of t is what? It's exponential of 3x of t. Now you scale it by a factor k. You scale it by a factor k, so you have k times exponential of 3x of t. This was the first step. The second step, what do you do? You scale your input. So the input to the system would be k times x of t. And the system would multiply exponential of 3 to it. So exponential of 3 k x of t the same. So again the law of homogeneity and additivity satisfied. This is a linear system. So have a look. We multiplied a coefficient that was depending on time. A time function coefficient we multiplied with the current input. We have the system to be linear. We multiplied a constant which was independent of time as a coefficient to the current input the system is also linear. So which means that I could conclude that the system 
linearity is independent of coefficient multiplied and the coefficient so let me uh, make it a little further the coefficient may or may not be a function of time so whatever is the coefficient if it is a function of time in this case if it is not a function of time in this case the system is a linear the linearity does not depend on it fine let's say two more examples 2t plus x of t over here y of t is 2t plus x of t additivity you can also check for homogeneity first if if the homogeneity law is not satisfied you do not need to check for additivity then i go through additivity first then the homogeneity so the first step would be y1 of t which would be 2 times t plus x1 of t and y2 of t would be 2t plus x2 of t so this implies that y1 plus y2 so you add them together so you have 2t 2t you would have 4t plus x1 of t plus x2 of t fine now in step number two what do you do you first add your inputs x1 of t plus x2 of t now you provide it to your system so you need to understand the system behavior now in this case the system is adding to 2t to the current input x of t so the current input now would be x1 plus x2 so which means that the system would add 2t to x1 plus x2 of t so have a look the additivity is not satisfied this is a non-linear system additivity is not satisfied so you do not need to check for homogeneity fine let's see the last y of t is 3 plus x of t again first additivity let's say uh, so, so y1 would be 3 plus x1 and similarly y2 would be 3 plus x2 so if you add them together y1 plus y2 this would be 3 plus 3 is 6 plus x1 plus x2 of t and now in the second step what you do is you have to add the inputs first and now provide it to the system so the system is doing what it's adding 3 to the current input so the current input is this thing so you have a 3 plus x1 plus x2 of t so have a look these two are not same so you can say that this is a non-linear system because the additivity law is not satisfied you do not need to check for homogeneity if the additivity is not satisfied you do not need to check for homo for additivity if homogeneity is not satisfied fine i do not need to check it but let's say if i do it so if you have y of t is 3 plus x of t so now if you scale it with a k factor so this would be 3k plus kx of t and now similarly in the step number two you have x of t you scale it so you have kx of t now you provide it to the system and the system is doing what it's adding 3 to your input so now it would be 3 plus k times x of t so have a look homogeneity is also not satisfied we did not need to check it but i just did it for time passing so this is also not satisfying so have a look for any added or subtracted term with your current input if the added or subtracted term with the current input is a function of time the system is non-linear if the added or subtracted term with the input is not a function of time it is a constant the system is also non-linear so i can conclude from this particular examples that system linearity 
is independent of the added or subtracted term fine and this added or subtracted term this may or may not be a function of time and we have seen this in both the examples so that's all about today that's all about linearity <clears throat> that's all about the properties of systems that's all about chapter one well i will see you in the next lecture with the uh, chapter number two but i also have the property of memory to record again because i've already recorded that once but the video quality i don't like it uh, so I would like to record it once again. Well, today may be possible. I will just do it after time. But if not, so you will get it first, right? This would be the last. When this lecture is finished, the next video you will be watching would be the next chapter. So see you there very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.